Hey guys! Hope you're doing well today. I'm certainly doing well, and I'm so glad to be here with you. It is such a joy every week to share the Word of God with you, share my thoughts with you, be kind of Rachel-esque, do kind of God's Word the way He's given it to me. It's so awesome to do it. Uh, for you guys, um, and I hope every week you get something out of it. I've been doing this for 11 years, not with the same schedule. I've been doing the Sunday schedule for about a year, but I've been doing YouTube videos or online videos combo of YouTube and Facebook for about 11 years and I'm so grateful to all of you um, for sticking with me, hanging with me, and for just doing life together with me. It's really great. I love the comments that I get about you guys. Like, from you guys. I've gotten comments from England, from Africa. Oh, it's just wonderful how far reaching this thing is. And it and just to think, it's it's me just recording videos from my apartment and it's so far reaching for the world and um, I, I don't even have a church, I'm not even, um, what they would say is, as a real kind of pastor or preacher, but in my mind, in my mind and in God's mind, I believe I am. I believe he's given me this unique gift and unique ministry that not many people are, are doing kind of like me and I'm so grateful for you guys and helping me be on this journey so thank you so much um okay uh so I have one announcement before I get into the word um the other day I I put together a group called Rachel's Rhythms and on Rachel's Rhythms you get my favorite music you get uh, songs that I listen to they could be gospel and Christian songs they could be country songs they can be um, any kind of songs that I love and I want to share with you so, um, I know I posted the link somewhere on this page, but if I didn't, um, it's called Rachel's Rhythms, and you can just automatically join the group and I'll post as much as I can when I hear a song I love and I want to share with you, it'll be up, it'll go up there, the YouTube video link to whatever song will go up there and I a few months ago I did I posted another um another I I started another group called Rachel's Reads it's kinda like Rachel's Rhythms but for books so you you get every everything that I'm currently currently reading it and most things that I have read that I can remember. I remember when I first did Rachel's Read, I spent two days looking for the links of books that I remember that I read. I got most I got most of them, but some of them I didn't get because I can't. Some of them I can't remember, and some of them uh, I just think I don't want 
anyone to know that I read that. Um, but, um, yeah, those two groups are, for those of you who want to know me outside of these sermons, outside of what I do on Facebook and YouTube, the kind of uh, non-Christian other person me, um, join those two groups, Rachel's Reads and Rachel's Rhythms. Reads is for books and Rhythms is for music. I've, I've done those two groups because um, I, I, I think my whole, I think most of my life, I think God has been given me the unique gift to share myself with the world in a way that is appropriate and that will help people. And I, I did those um, things to, to share with you a bit of myself outside of the church. You know, um, most preachers, uh, some most preachers, when they turn off the camera, you don't see them when they're outside of the church. You see them on the pulpit, or you may see uh, people on YouTube that you like, or whatever, and you don't know who they are outside of the church. You know that they know, know the Word, love the Word, love Jesus, but you have no idea who they are. And these two groups are to show you more of who I am uh, as a person. Um, and I will tell you, on Rachel's Reads, most of the time, you won't see Christian books. Some of the time you will, depends on what I'm reading. But you will see all kinds of books. Um, you will see romance novels. You will see... Um, you will see... Uh, biographies. You will see... Uh, a mystery that I read with... About in Frank. And, um, you'll see all kinds of stuff. That's... Because I want I want you guys to know that I'm human. <laughs> I have proclivities, propensities. I have things that are not so good. I have things about me that are great. Um, and it goes all together in this human package. And. Um, I wanted to sh to show you guys through my books and through uh, the music I like. And there again, you won't see just Christian music. You will see Christian music. I have some Torrid Wells there. I have other uh, Christian artists there. But you will see um, some... Country. I posted some country there yesterday. Uh, you will see some uh, musicals and some R&B. I posted something about Usher, his Tiny Desk concert, which I love. Because um, I want to show you that, at least for me, I'm more than a... A preacher, I'm more than like a Bible reader, although I love all that stuff. I love Jesus, but I'm also a person. I have struggles, I, I have things that I am working on, I have, I have issues, I have to pay bills, you know. And I think that's kind of been the downfall of the church. Not really showing that we have not only scars, 
but preachers have lives too. It's not just, you know, that we that we go to church and we study the word of God and we preach a sermon. No, we have lives, we have to pay bills, we most of us have kids. I don't have kids, I'm not married, but most preachers have kids, most preachers have wives, and everybody has a struggle. And that kind of leads beautifully into my sermon called Taming the Monster. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for what you're about to do. And I thank you for, for just the lives of every person, Lord, that will be listening to this sermon. I thank you, Lord, that you are God and that you kind of know every part of us. You kind of know the monster God. You kind of know the angel God. You kind of know every part of us. Not kind of know, you do know us. And we thank you and we pray, praise you for loving not just the good part of us, not just the angel part of us or the part we, we do on Sundays, but thank you for loving the insecure part of us. Thank you for loving the part of us with issues and the part of us with challenges, God. Thank you for just loving us, Lord Jesus. Today, Lord God, permeate the atmosphere with your love and with your grace. Let everybody under the sound of my voice who is seeking, let them find today. Let everybody who is lost today under the sound of my voice be found. Touch them. In the name of Jesus, let your arms of love reach wide today. Let my words, let them feel you in my words, Lord Jesus. Caress them with your loving hand. Lord Jesus, touch them with your spirit like never before. In the name of Jesus, speak to me. Speak through me. Amen. Okay, guys. I was listening to Monster by Justin Bieber and Shawn Mendes. Fellow Canadians love that song. Um, the song Monster talks about um, they they in the song Monster, both Justin and Shawn tell their stories about their personal experiences in the music industry um, and they and they say um, what and I will put the song on Rachel's rhythm so just go to my page and go to my Facebook page and go to Rachel's rhythms you'll see it there right after I'm done this sermon uh, so, so they, they both tell their stories, um, of, of how they, they both handled fame, and they said, um, they were like, am I the monster? Please let me know. And I was thinking of how we all have a monster inside of us. We all have a have a part of us that is really good and genuinely just wonderful and um, um, loving and all that the good part that people hang around. But we all have a monster. And the monster is the part that we don't talk about. The part that is not so cleaned up. The part that we are ashamed by. The part that we need God to deal with. 
and the Lord gave me this title last Sunday. He gave me the title of Taming the Monster. And he also gave me these, um, these points. He said, Taming the Monster requires submission, surrender, um, service, Sorry about that. My four points are submission, surrender, sacrifice, and service. So I'm going to talk about those four points today. Um, when I think of the monster, I think of the part of ourselves, like I said before, that we don't like people to see. The part, the part of ourselves that we try and hide, but we need, instead of trying to hide it, we need to submit it to God, which means not to give it up, but to lay it down. Um, and I think once we lay it down, we can then deal with it. And let me say say this. So the mon parts of the monster, p parts of ourselves that we don't like are necessary. But we just have to submit them to God. We need to lay them down. We don't need some parts of the monster we need to get rid of. But not all parts. We sometimes think we need to get get everything right, get totally clean and totally pure. But but sometimes uh, the the unclean and dirty parts of us are the parts that God is wanting to use. So instead of scrapping everything, we need to submit. The, the monster to God and let let him show us how to tame it and then after we lay it down we need to let it go submission means laying it down and surrender means to let it go which means we take our hands off of it and then we, and then we sacrifice something, which means we give up something. So we lay it down, let it go. Um, we we give it up, and we. And then we serve. So, taming the monster can go for God or for other people. Doing this for God is easier than doing it for other people. When we say we submit to God, we lay down our will for His. And we, and we, 
And when we say surrender to God, we let go our will for His. After we submit it, we surrender it. And then we we sacrifice, which means we give it up. And then we serve, which means we, in the terms of God, we worship. So, but the monster doesn't only have to be tamed by God. Uh, the monster can only, doesn't have to only be tamed for God in his service. But the monster has to be tamed for people. And that's what we, that's where we have a problem. problem. And I'm not saying to just um, be false. And like, yeah, I'm tamed my monster. I have to smile all the time, although I'm feeling crappy. No. Taming the monster means um, there are parts of the monster, parts of your personality that are a bit rougher, but they're necessary. God will leave them there because he needs to use them. And he may spoon, spoon those parts out, but he needs them. And there are parts that he'll just... Um, get rid of, and there are parts that will be a process to get rid of. The monster is a big beast, and you won't get rid of the monster right away. And like I said before, we all have a monster that we are dealing with. We all have parts of us that need work and and being submitted to God is easy for most of us. But being submitted to people, that's the part that we have the problem. The problem was we say, oh, I'm not supposed to be submitted to any man. Um, you are not supposed to give up yourself or who God made you to be for any man, but, but, um, submission is necessary in any relationship, because we both can't get our will all the time. Sometimes it takes submission and compromise. What I mean, what, when I say compromise, I don't mean to compromise yourself or your self-worth or the core of yourself, but I mean to compromise in situations. So it cannot just be your way all the time. We live in a culture of me and, and that is not really, that is not going to work when it comes to a submissive relationship. Submission is not you give up yourself. Submission is you lay down your will for the good of, of the whole relationship. Because if one person doesn't lay down their will or or, or we can't compromise together, the relationship is not going to work. If it's all about what I want and what I need and screw you if you don't give it to me, that's not, uh, that's not, go that relationship is not going to last. Um, we need to, um, Learn how to be more submissive in relationships. We need to learn that submission is not a bad thing. To be able to stand under a mission of another person 
means that you are mature enough to know that my way will isn't always the best way. My way isn't always the best way, or it's not my way or the, or the highway. It's our way, and, and we're working up to, together somehow. But if you if you are not willing to stand under someone else's mission and vision or take someone else's point of view and kind of compromise it with yours, a relationship will not work. And surrender means... Submission means you lay it down. Surrender means you give it up. Um, so, when you're in a human relationship, sometimes the way you see things is not at the time proper for the situation. Because, let me take uh, a husband and wife for, for a second. So, um, l let's say a man before he's married is used to, to uh, uh, not doing the dishes until, you know, until they get really high, we'll do them. And his wife wants him to do the dishes after every meal because they get dirty and the more they sit there dirty they get dirt gets caked on them and they're hard to clean so his the husband's will in that case may not be the right way in that situation. You may have a lot of dirty plates or they may be hard to clean if you're waiting there for days for the dishes to get done. Um, I think we, we need to learn to love each other enough to sometimes give up what we what we want in a specific situation we never give up who we are who you are at your core you never give that up trade it or do it for anything but you can give up something in a situation for the better of a whole but you you never have to give up who you are. A lot of people, why they don't get married today, to say, I don't want to give up who I am. I, 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 I need to keep who I am. And, in a, and that is totally right. You never give up who you are for anybody at your core. But in a situation, you may have to give up something for the good of that certain situation. Like, you can't be two places at once. Let's say if one of you wants to go to a concert that costs $300, but you need to pay your bills. So, you, you guys need to use that $300 to pay bills. You can't afford to go to a concert or do something fun. Doing something fun is great, but we we all have adult responsibility and sometimes we have to give up what's fun or what we want to do for the good of the situation. Or sometimes we can both get a little of what we want in the compromise. 
Uh, so, so back to my dish example. So maybe you don't do the dishes right after dinner, but you do the dishes that day. So maybe you can do the dishes in an hour or two. Um, sometimes, and sacrifice. Sacrifice, um, you kind of have to give up something to gain something. Surrender is you just give something up. Sacrifice is usually you give up something to gain something. So, you might give up uh, the fact that you, that you yourself want to go to school, but you know your, your daughter, who is in her 20s, needs to go to college. And you know you don't have the money to do both things. So you sacrifice your school for your daughter because you know it's for her betterment. So, and you know that in the future, she will um, go on to do great things whether while you are just going to... Uh, sit at home and take care of your your family which is honorable but but your daughter um probably needs to go to school more, more at this stage of her life than you do and and i think sacrificing is very important but a caution about sacrifice some people sacrifice so much they they give their whole soul away, they give their whole self away until they have nothing left. I'm not saying that I'm not saying to sacrifice sacrifice until you're empty. I'm saying sacrifice something for a situation but don't sacrifice everything you know sacrifice the fact that that your daughter goes to school instead of you but don't sacrifice the fact that um, like every day you like to take a bubble bath um, to for for your sanity and what you like to do. Because what happens when you're sacrificing everything um, you and you feel empty and so depleted, you have nothing to give. So this happens a lot with parents. They sacrifice, 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 give, 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 give. give. And at the end of the day, they have nothing left for themselves. And they feel so depleted and so empty. And never sacrifice to the point where you feel empty and depleted. The only way you should feel empty is that you've, you've given it all to God and he can fill you up. The the problem with people, the difference with people and God, if you sacrifice for God and feel empty, he can fill you up. If you sacrifice for people and feel empty, they can't do anything for you. And then you feel irritable, you feel like no one appreciates you, you feel like you're just a figurehead, you feel like like absolutely awful so sacrifice yes is necessary in a situation but don't sacrifice so much is that you 
that you give your whole self away and you you're constantly giving up what you want and never sacrifice is a two-way street never be the only one in the human relationship sacrificing and even for Jesus he won't be the only one sacrificing there either he made the biggest sacrifice he sacrificed his life for your sins so even in that his sacrifice is reciprocal we get the cross we get salvation we get redemption we get restoration and he gets people to spread his word and his work so see even in that that relationship we are not the only one sacrificing uh, when you are in a relationship and you are the only one giving and giving and giving it creates secret resentment and a lot of people are are openly resentful sometimes they're secretly resentful and it erodes relationships it totally destroys relationships so make sure uh, sacrificing is mutual you sacrifice sometimes and the other person sacrifices sometimes so so that way when the two people are sacrificing it creates a mutual gratefulness on both hands so so that one person doesn't feel like they're always sacrificing and to all those of you who are always sacrificing god wants me to tell you your reward is on the way for those of you who are always sacrificing god wants me to tell you your reward is on the way you've been sacrificing you've been toiling you've been uh, preaching you've been you've been doing all this thing all these things for the kingdom you've been giving your finances and and everything Lord and the Lord says your sacrifice is not in vain and he has not forgotten about you and the last one is service and with God service means worship and and to serve him means to worship him but for people service can have a, have several different meanings and I think this is something in our society that we've lost we've lost the ability to serve one another it's funny i just recently got a got one of those google speakers um thanks to, to my sister i got one and every time i tell google thank you she has a couple of responses and one of her responses is i'm happy to serve and and i'm thinking why is google smarter than we are the lost art of service we think service is to give something away give something up give away a service but no service is ultimately for them and for us so we gain in service too when we serve people we gain as well uh, when i i consider doing these sermons as a service 
And then when I do these sermons for you guys, and I'm serving you, I'm, I'm teaching you and sharing the word of God with you the way he's given it to me and in the uni unique way of my ministry, I'm also getting something out of it. I'm getting the satisfaction of changed lives. I'm getting, um, I'm getting, um, the fact that he, that he has loved me enough to use me in such a wonderful way. And it really lifts my spirit when I know what he's given me is affecting people's lives in a positive way. It's so amazing. And I think we need to get back to serving not only God, not only, ver not only um, vertically, but horizontally as well. Um, because serving means to give without expectation, you know. And even sometimes volunteer, we volunteer to get extra credit, we volunteer to get high school volunteer hours, but we need to get back to service for serving sake. I don't get any money from YouTube for this, but I do it because he's called me to do it. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy serving you in that way. I enjoy um, posting videos on Rachel's Rhythms and books on Rachel's Reads because that's all my act of service. And a lot of people, they want to volunteer, but they want to volunteer for something, whether it be prestige, whether it be to show their friends, whether it be to look good on a resume. Service needs to go beyond you and to the, the other person. And yes, service will benefit you, but ultimately you should serve because you love people and you want to see them thrive and strive. You know, that's, that's, um, what, what I say, and the, and the point of serving God, the point of worshiping God, is to benefit Him, and it's you, and it benefits Him and you as well. It benefits Him because, uh, he gets to know how much you love it, how much you care about it. And it's not that he needs it, but he, but he loves it all the same. And, and for you, it just has so many benefits. It has benefits spiritually and emotionally when we serve God and praise God. And when we serve each other, it's also service to God. So service to God is not just worship. It's actually ties in to serving each other. So when you go to that job, when you go to wherever you go, when you serve wherever you serve, remember you're ultimately serving God. And that is the best thing ever about serving. And you can see people's lives change because of what you do, because of your reasonable service. 
the comments I get, the the thank you, Rachel, for that. Everything I get is just so uplifting to my spirit, spirit to know that um, what God has given me is impacting many lives, the lives of my family, the lives of my friends, the lives of strangers. It is so awesome and it feeds my spirit and it feeds my soul to serve in this way. And that's why we need to start serving each other because it doesn't just feed the other person, it feeds our spirits and our souls when we serve. So, so how to tame the monster? Submission, surrender, sacrifice, and service. And another thing too is sometimes uh, when the monster is about to blow up, when you are about to, to get angry and show um, a part of yourself that that God is still working on, step back and assess the situation. Ask yourself, is this worth getting angry over? What, and what other ways that anger can I approach? this situation to get my intended result because usually if you blow up in anger it won't get your intended result and your monster may not be anger your monster may be lust your monster may be fame your monster may be money so what is at the root of your monster? Assess that situation. Because oftentimes the need is valid, but it's just the way you're meeting it is not. So oftentimes under your monster, under your issue, is a need that is valid but the way you are meeting that need is not valid and or productive or beneficial for you. So find out what that need is and discover a way you can meet that need without destroying yourself. And like I said before, there are aspects of the monster that you need and there are aspects that you that God is going to smooth out and use and there are aspects of the monster that will be a process to get rid of so guys I hope you've enjoyed taming the monster and I hope it was a benefit to you uh, like it was to me when God gave it to me, this title. Um, taken after that song by, by Shawn Mendes and Justin Bieber. Uh, thank you guys for being with me. I really appreciate it. Bye. And don't judge your monster to be better or worse than somebody else's monster. I was watching a youth conference uh, this week, and on the last day of the conference, uh, the preacher said something, and all the teenagers went, boo. <laughs> and I said, 
everybody in there has an issue, but yet, as teenagers, they're booing somebody else's issue. We, we sometimes think, because we don't struggle with that issue, that it's so bad, but let's keep in mind that everybody has a different monster. And there is is a part in the world, there is a part in the word of God that will nail us all to the wall. It may not be the same part, but there is a part in the Bible that when we read it, we cringe because we know that is exactly what we struggle with. And God, and Jesus came for the monster. Jesus came to tame the monster. And the way to start to tame the monster is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. It is the best relationship you could ever have. And all you have to do is in your own words, in your own way, say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I, Lord, I love you. And wherever you are, just be honest with him about it. The reason I don't ask you to pray after me is because the Lord wants to hear your voice, your words, not me. Like, wherever you are in your faith, the Lord wants to hear you. The Lord wants to hear the cry of your heart. And then after you've cried out to God and accepted him in your life, then you can come to, you, you can ask me for help after that. And I will do my best to assist you. You can contact me on Facebook. You can comment on Facebook or YouTube. You can direct message me on Facebook. You can direct message me on Instagram. Whatever. Thank you guys so much. Bye.